Hi there, I'm Brian Waller, President of the Technology Association of Iowa. Now more than ever, Iowa companies and organizations are seeing themselves as technology companies. With me today is Senator Charles Grassley from the great state of Iowa. I have to ask to start off, Senator Grassley, how are you using technology to virtually connect with fellow senators and constituents during this unique time? Well, if all of you small businesses uh, that you talk about are calling themselves uh, technology people, uh, then I'd have to say I'm a technology senator from the standpoint that uh, uh, everything that's done in our office is pretty much paperless. And uh, we, uh, I, I have an opportunity to communicate with constituents in most of the social media ways that you can think of. And I think I have a reputation very much just as an example of being one of the first ones to use Twitter and having about uh, 600,000 followers at this point. So you're known for doing the full grassy, the 99 counties. How do you intend to do that virtually? And how's that going to shape you no. connecting with your constituents? Well, I have found myself since this pandemic doing a lot of things virtually, but not one of them is going to take the place of my face to face uh, uh, Q&A with my constituents in each of the 99 counties. So we've before the pandemic, we were only able to get to 14, I believe. So I've got about 85 to go to. And how I'm going to get to those other 85 is going to kind of depend upon what the rules of spacing are and how many people you can get together. And we don't have anything uh, laid out right now, but I hope uh, even if I have to finish on New Year's Eve, I get go to the 99th county and have a Q and A. Yeah. Well, I know you're good for it. Uh, what states has the steps has the federal government taken to help protect small businesses in the state of Iowa? So I think most of it is in the CARES Act. And that CARES Act would be for small business, uh, two, at least two things. One, the uh, forgivable loan program, if they keep their people on the payroll, and uh, we put 350 billion in that, uh, right away in March, and we thought it would really get us through three months, and it got us through three weeks. Mm -hmm. Then we put another 310 billion in it, uh, and uh, and that is uh, uh, there's still 150 billion in it. There's kind of a feeling that maybe that won't all be used up. And uh, then the other one is for some tax, uh, uh, not tax forgiveness, but tax delay, like not having to pay the payroll tax so that for a period of the rest of this year, they will have some more capital to work with. And what I've just said is for companies under 500, of which about 60% uh, of the employment in this country would come from that size. If they're over 500 and they still wanna be considered small business, there's some help from the Federal Reserve on that. Then one other area for the first time, and I think just for this, pandemic, not for permanent law change, we've made self-employed people available to, uh, uh, to get unemployment compensation. So you have been a big proponent of rural broadband, not specific to the pandemic, but talk about your support and how important rural broadband is, especially for a state like Iowa now that we're working virtually. Well, we're finding out right now how important it is because of the pandemic. And you're finding it out in schools, for instance. Uh, schools can't meet after the middle of March in Iowa. And then some of them uh, have good uh, uh, broadband connection and are able to uh, continue some of their education in a non-traditional way uh, for their students. Uh, and then there's other areas where they don't have that access and the kids are losing out on something. So uh, broadband is this important. And this is something we're learning through the pandemic because a lot of people that never thought they could work away from the office are learning how to do it. And that may continue in the future. And the extent to which it continues in the future is the extent to which we are able to uh, uh, have greater broadband uh, capability in the state of Iowa, all over the country. But I think it's probably worse in rural America, although you do hear about some parts of big cities that don't have very good service either. I can't imagine that, but I've heard that. Uh, you're an optimistic guy. This will be my last question for you. What positive change has come out of this situation? I know we're not through it, but what positive change has come out of this situation we've gone through? Well, let's say where the United States has come up short with ventilators 
and uh, PPEs, uh, gowns and masks and all that stuff. I think we've learned a lesson that to, uh, because this pandemic will probably come back, maybe not as bad, and hopefully not as bad in the winter. And we, we, we should have learned enough to be ready for it. Another big thing directly related to your association is a greater use of telehealth. I think there's people that are getting acquainted with telehealth and they're going to find it a, a lot easier uh, to get medical care uh, through uh, telemedicine than, uh, than the normal way of going to the doctor's office. Of course, if you got to go to the hospital, you still have to go to the hospital. But uh, just for uh, some family practice type things, you ought to be able to use telemedicine to a greater extent, or telepsychiatry as an example, or uh, guiding people through uh, drug abuse and things of that nature. It's really proved uh, necessary. Another thing I think we learned is that we shut down uh, elective surgery uh, too soon in some areas of the country and, uh, and just costing a lot of jobs in health care, but also very harmful to a lot of small hospitals. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it has been an absolute honor to speak with you and spend a few minutes with you. Uh, the Technology Center of the state of Iowa, Mr. Charles Grassley, have a wonderful day. Thanks for your service. Well, and I thank you for having me and I hope you will uh, have your people keep in touch with me through email and, and follow me on Twitter and, uh, and uh, through Facebook and things like that because we're on all of them. And that uh, two-way communication with our constituents, what representative government is all about, and I help, and I thank you for helping us do it through this program that you put together with me.